All right, great. So hopefully you've had a chance to really kind of get to know this work and, and maybe you've had an opportunity thus far to try some of these um, breathing exercises. Uh, by the way, they can be done without the EWAT and they can be very effective that way as well. So without the bag, these exercises can be, uh, and this breath work can be very powerful. Um, so um, some of the things that we know about the science behind this are Van Arden was a, a German scientist and he is kind of the father of something called EWA or exercise with oxygen. And what Van Arden discovered is that if you supersaturate the body with oxygen, so what he would have people do is exercise while breathing 100% pure oxygen. Um, and what he was finding was that people were able to utilize their oxygen more efficiently as these sessions were um, progressing. And so he had to kind of backtrack and figure out well, what's really happening there. Uh, we're having these people do these exercises with oxygen. There's various disease and pathology that we're seeing resolve itself. And there's some sort of an aspect physio physiologically that's happening where people are actually utilizing um, their oxygen more effectively. So what he postulated was that there was something beyond just being able to oxygenate the, the blood and that you were actually starting to oxygenate what he believed to be is the lymph. And now he's not the only one present day that feels that the lymph is something that's getting hyperoxygenated. But um, there is something going on where the body is able to take on more than just 100% oxygen. So these exercises that, you're, 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 that, that I've taught you here, these, breath these breathing exercises are really going to hyperoxygenate your body now. Another aspect of that is we know that with the conscious breaths that we're getting rid of all of our CO2, which is going to really alkalize the blood. And we've been able to test people and actually find that their blood actually gets as alkaline as eight. So for you out there that aren't really science geeks and so forth, that's a very alkaline state for the blood. The blood usually likes to stay in a very narrow pH of about 7.4, 7.35 or so. So when you're outgassing all of the CO2, you're alkalizing that, um, that fluid, that blood. And alkalized um, fluid is a much better absorber of oxygen. So we know this, so there's, there's, there's definitely like a very hyper oxygenation happening. And that's why that you're, you're able to hold your breath for a lot longer after doing these conscious breaths. Um, my goal is to be able to do five minutes. I'm, I'm um, kind of in the four minute area right now. Um, but, you know, uh, typical goals I think for people are you know, in the beginning, I don't think two minutes is very difficult to achieve. Um, um, certainly people get up to three, four, and even five minute mark with the, these breath holds over time. And some of the beautiful things that this can translate into is if you're into doing free diving or swimming, um, there's certainly some great opportunities for you to go out and really enjoy nature in the water and be able to hold your breath for a long time after um, after doing these exercises. So we know that um, the body's becoming more efficient with oxygen. We know that the body is becoming hyper oxygenated with the alkalization and possibly um, um, oxygenating the lymphatics. Um, what Van Arden postulated was that the tissues would become congested with, with, with what he called trapped blood protein. So these trapped blood proteins were basically clogging up and congesting the capillaries. So again, for those of you that aren't science geeks or anatomy geeks, um, basically blood goes in through the arteries. So you have an arterial blood flow to the tissue. And then there's the capillaries, which is the exchange between the arterial and the venous. And it's that space in there that the veins or the arterioles become the smallest. They're very, very small. And so the blood perfuses through this. And when it's at this state, in this place, this is where oxygen tends to move out of the red blood cells into the tissues and where, where our body gets the oxygen. So um, 
what Van Arden postulated was that these, what he noticed was that these um, capillaries would actually become more open and so more dilated. So we know that something's happening like this when um, repeated uh, events are done and this would explain why your breath hold becomes a lot more um, um, lang uh, longer in time, your endurance should be Im improved, your mental clarity should be much increased as you do more of this. Um, you should feel more happy, more upbeat, your immune system becomes stronger and more appropriate if you have like an autonomic or autoimmune types of problems. So a whole host of health benefits um, have been noticed by people doing this uh, exercise on a regular basis. So um, besides the, another aspect of the, the benefit of doing these exercises is there is a activation of some deep areas in your neurological system. And when you don't expose yourself to certain uncomfortable situations with which an exhale and a breath hold would begin to tell your body, you know, hey, we're at a fight or flight situation. Um, this is an emergency situation. This type of emergency situation is going to activate some very deep, what they call primitive brain or reptilian brain aspects. And when you activate these areas, they become stronger. We know that um, one of the big detrimental aspects to nerves and brain tissue is disuse. Just like the Chinese proverb, the unused gate gets the rust. Well, when it comes to nerves in the brain, the unused nerves literally don't get the activation where they're going to keep and maintain the cell wall walls of those neurons. So the neurons literally start to um, to die and, and go away. So we want to activate these and we just don't activate these things um, regularly enough. So what I've found is in, in conjunction with doing this um, advanced EWAT system is cold exposure. And I think we should like We'll do a completely different um, segment as far as cold exposure, but um, the you know kind of the, the 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 bottom line with cold exposure, it's a, it's an uncomfortable situation that you're putting your body into, and it's sending signals of, hey, I I I am in a an emergency situation. I need to build and garner certain faculties so that I can be stronger in the future, and these are called hormetic responses. So a hormetic response is a response or a stimulation that would or could kill you. So it could be something that's that's not normally healthy but given in a certain dose gives you what's called a net gain. Okay, so like for instance if you were to do a sauna, um, obviously if you stay in the sauna for a really long time that could be have negative impact on your health. Same thing with cold exposure. If you have the right dose with cold exposure, there's actually a whole load of health benefits that you'll start to gain from that exposure. And we just don't expose ourselves to cold very often. Just like with these exercises, we're just not exposing ourselves to having to hold our breath. So these things are activating some very deep structures in your body, which are gonna start to wake up and start to give you some incredible benefits for you to be able to accomplish and do things that you never thought that your body was physically able to do. I mean, some people are getting to the point where they're able to endure um, very long stretches of cold exposure um, with, with relative ease. And again, like with this breath work, you're able to literally hold your breath for longer and longer periods of time, which you would have thought would have been unimaginable. Could you imagine holding your breath for four minutes right now? You know, obviously before really starting and delving into this stuff, that would be something that just wouldn't even be in your, you know, your, your, your brain network of possibilities, but it absolutely is. So, well, thanks for joining me with this segment and uh, I'll see you on the next segment. Hi, this is Dr. John. Thanks for joining me. If you or a loved one suffers from difficult neurologic conditions that no one seems to have answers for, send them to functionalcranialrelease.com. You can contact me by phone or email me at askdrjl at gmail.com. And remember, if healing is possible, consider it to be within your reach. Bye for now.
functionalcranialrelease.com.